Yeah, thanks for coming. Um, first on the injury uh, front, because I know that'll be a question. Clay, you'll get to talk to him at two, but his, uh, he's doing fine. We'll have another update on him probably on the All-Star break. Uh, don't construe that as if we think he'll be back by the All-Star break. That just means we'll have an update then. Um, but you'll get a chance to talk to him today as well. And then Willie Cauley-Stein suffered a mid-foot strain last week, scrimmaging in his left foot. He's going to miss camp, um, and we'll probably look at him again uh, and give you an update at the end of October, so about 30 days from now. So that's, every, other than that, we're healthy, and uh, obviously we start tomorrow. So, so any questions on anything, or on any of that, or anything else? Go ahead. Yeah, mid foot, left, yeah. Uh, Bob, how did you envision D'Angelo Russell fitting in on this team from an on-court standpoint when you acquired him? Um, just a good player. Uh, good off the ball, good on the ball. Uh, obviously young, still growing, still getting better, coming off a good year. I think I said this previously, the hardest thing uh, for, for any team to do is, especially a more mature team, which we were heading into free agency, uh, is to get good young players. You either have to uh, usually draft them uh, develop them on your own, but uh, they're hard to acquire via trade, and obviously in free agency, most of them are restricted or, or are hard to get. So we looked at him as a good young player that's getting better, um, smart, skilled, coming off a really good year. His team did well, he did well, and um, we're excited to see how he how he fits with us. We think he'll be good, and uh, we'll, that process starts tomorrow. Joe Fonzi, back row. Hi, Bob. Uh, I'll go breaking news. Uh, your thoughts as someone who's been there as an agent, a former college player, what are your thoughts on the, the thing the governor signed today about uh, a couple of years from now, collegiate players getting paid? Yeah, I, I literally just saw that. So clearly that's kind of a landmark thing. Um, I think it's probably still in the nascent stages of I, we all have no idea how, how that'll look, how that'll play out. Um, I'm sure the NCAA will have some ideas on it, but um, the, the tide is shifting. Wh whether this is the beginning of it or the, or uh, it'll, it'll all move from this position, I don't know. But I do think you're seeing public sentiment. Um, obviously, athletes have their own opinions, but uh, I think it, it signifies a shift in the direction of, at, at minimum, the, the change is needed. And maybe this is the change, I don't know. But I think it's a statement towards that. Front row here, Anthony. Anthony Sayer with The Athletic. Do you feel that uh, the roster set with like the 14 you have and obviously you have the hard cap kind of lingering over you and, and your two two-way guys are, do you feel like stuff is up for grabs in the next month? Well, I think playing time's up for grabs as far as optionality to change the roster. Obviously being hard capped, it makes it, makes it harder to do. Um, doesn't mean we can't do things during the season or won't do things, but I think what is up for grabs more than any other, at least in the last five years, is who's going to, Who's going to rise up and, and grab a spot? We have openings. We have um, competition at certain spots. See who starts. I have uh, more specific thoughts on those ty types of things, but it's not as if it's been in the last five years where you know we knew exactly who'd be starting. We had an idea of how many minutes they'd be playing. Um, a lot of youth and um, a lot of to be determined with this roster. We know who certain guys are, but even you know, with Clay being out, what, what happens there? You know, what happens with the minutes there? How do you stagger Steph and D'Angelo? And that's obviously stuff for Steve, but he's uh, been meeting with his staff. Um, but I'm in a position like a lot of you, where we'll see um, with some of the people that we're, we don't have intimate knowledge of, who are they, how do they fit on this team? Logan, second row right. Logan Murdoch, NBC Sports Bay Area. You have eight new guys on the roster, and that's the first time you've, in a long time you've really had a lack of continuity on that roster. How are you? Uh, how long are you anticipating before the team starts to gel and kind of, you know, you know, how how long do you think before they start to gel? Man, I don't know. I don't know how long it'll take. It'll take as long as it takes, I guess. Um, I will say this. You know, we do have eight new guys. I think we still maintained at least 
in the near term with Steph, Clay, and Draymond, um, and Looney being healthy, I suppose, Clay not being healthy, but we have uh, some, of, some of our foundation, uh, a big part of it still there. That's helpful to teach these guys. It's not all brand new, and, and obviously most of our um, high, high minutes guys, at least coming into this group, are, are guys that have been here. Uh, so that'll help, but as far as how does the dust settle, when does it settle, I think that's, that's a question that we have too internally. I don't know the answer to that. I mean, I do know this. We, we believe um, that things take time to evolve, and we're prepared, especially with a younger roster, to allow that to happen. And that's the mindset that we have uh, from a coaching staff, from a front office staff, is um, let's see uh, how things are going before we make any blanket decisions or judgment on any of it. And, um, but we're excited. I mean, look, we're excited about the youth. We're excited about the unknown. Um, in, in, in years past, we've had a lot of known, which has been fantastic, but this is different. Front row, left-hand side, Nick. Bob, Nick Friedel, ESPN. Have you and Steve and Steph and the medical staff sat down, given the injuries with Clay and the roster transition, is there any kind of minutes limit or do the season? We haven't sat down. I mean, I've talked to Steve about it, and obviously you'll talk to Steph. I, there's no plans to rest him um, unless something develops. Um, I don't think he's of that mind. I think Steve likes the minutes he had him at. I think the bigger question will be, um, the bigger discipline will be, um, do, do, do you increase those? And I don't think Steve's of that mindset, but uh, with potentially less margin for error, there may be opportunities where you'd say, well, we've got to put step back in the game. That'll require discipline. But I don't think anybody's um, saying now, at this moment in time, going to camp that we're going to rest him X amount of games or his minutes are going to be diminished or decreased. Uh, but, but we know who he is, and we know how important he is to um, this roster, this organization. And so we're mindful of that. But, but I think we've always tried to be mindful of that. I don't think we're going to all of a sudden um, kind of 180 on how we view him and, and put him in a compromised position. It's, it's just, hey, we know who he is, we know how important he is, we still want to win. Um, so it's balancing all those things. Third row, right hand side, Rusty. Oh. <laughs> Mark. Oh, Rusty. Uh, Daniel Rue, The Athletic. You talked about bringing in Russell and the hard cap, and there are a bunch of logistical challenges that come with that. When did you start seriously considering the possibility that that might even be on the table? And what was the preparation like for something that was so different from where they are now? Yeah, I think the challenge, when I, went, I went to New York. I think a lot of people wrote and opined that Kevin was absolutely leaving. I didn't opportunity for him to return was still there. I hadn't heard it from him. And I had a relationship with him where I felt like if he knew that, he'd say it. But he told me the day of uh, free agency. Um, a few hours before free agency uh, actually began in New York, and at that moment in time, it was the f it was the finality of it. So now we could at least internally say, what do we want? What do we want to do with this now? With Kevin having said he's going going somewhere else, and then we thought, well, we know where he's going. He told me where he was going, and um, so I thought, well, how can we? evaluate what we could do with that situation. But there's so many moving parts to it. We had to wait until free agency actually began um, that evening, which was a few hours later. Um, and Ke Kevin wanted his own moment, which is I'm respectful of, uh, to say this is where I'm going. And after free agency began, it was almost to the point of, well, would you, uh, would you help us with a sign and trade? Um, and, and usually those things come later, but, but we were forced into kind of asking that question because D'Angelo had suitors and he was meeting with other teams and um, being asked to make a decision. So all that happened really fast. So that evening of free agency, it was pretty late in New York, we started saying, well, if this is something we can do, can we do it one? Because it seemed to be report. It, it was not, I don't think anybody said it was easy, but you had to get the permission of Brooklyn. You had to get D'Angelo to say he would come. You had to get Kevin to say he would agree to a sign and trade. That's three things, but all happening for different reasons, different motivations, different self-interests. So to get all that aligned went way into the, that morning, and then all, obviously into the next day, that wasn't even done until the following day of free agency. Um, getting another team to help take on a contract we had to move, um, getting our own books in order. So um, 
happened really quickly. But from our standpoint, it was either it's th either we try to um, get something from this situation or get this, or, or we don't get anything at all, and Kevin goes, which he certainly had the right to do, and Brooklyn could have taken him into space. Two more for Bob. Third row, left-hand side. Hey, Bob, given the talent and experience that Steph and Draymond have together, what do you think they can do to, to help bridge everything, both with their play on the court and behind the scenes? Leadership. I think leadership will be huge for those two guys. The, Steph's our oldest player, which I still have to remind myself of. I think he, he does, too. Um, we will be tested. You know, we'll be tested. And they're going to have to lead uh, through adversity, um, through youth. They're going to have to tolerate some inexperience. They're going to have to tolerate um, not having the wise old, you know, Sean and Andre. And, and, and we've even had vets beyond that, whether it's David West or Zaza. And, um, they're those guys. And I think that'll take a little bit of time kind of looking over your shoulder and, and a, maybe a big brother or, uh, isn't there. And you say, well, now I'm that guy. That, that's a new challenge. I think they'll both embrace it. And they're both fully capable, but they haven't done that yet. Um, we couldn't probably ask for two better guys to do that. And they're different, I mean, they're different personalities. So I think we need both to lead. Um, but we're going to learn a lot about all of us uh, this season. And, but that's okay, you know, they'll learn about leadership, we'll learn about, you know, obviously, I'm, I'm big on humility, so we're going to have to be humble in certain situations, um, which is good for us, too. So it's going to be, uh, I'm excited. It's, uh, there's a lot of newness to it, but that doesn't, that should be something that for me, it excites me, and I think it excites them, too. Last one for Bob, third row, right-hand side, Phil. Hey, Bob. Uh, how much of a setback do you consider the injury to Willie Cauley-Stein? Obviously, he's a guy who I'm sure you would, as much as anybody, want in here adapting to his team and, and vice versa. Yeah, it's disappointing um, for him, mostly. I know he was ready to go. And um, you, know, you like to have new players get a, get a chance to get acclimated in camp. Um, so for him and, and uh, obviously the coaches, myself, the whole organization, we want him to get back. Uh, the good news is uh, he will be back, but camp is a formative time for him and his teammates. Uh, nothing you can do. Injuries are clearly clearly part of it. But um, yeah, we want everybody to be healthy, and uh, you know, hopefully he'll be able to watch and and pick up on some things without participating and stay as uh, in shape as he possibly can. But yeah, it's it's uh, it's one of those things you just wish didn't happen.